working through the applique version of the 12 days of Christmas stitch along. So um, of course I couldn't decide which method to use and so I'm making one three different quilts using different methods so you can choose one or a combination of all. So the applique quilt I'm going to uh, make using just a variety of blues so blues and tans are always popular I've just grabbed a heap of skinny quarters of blues not sure how much fabric I'll need so I'm just going to make sure I've got plenty I might still add just a couple more contrasts some lighter smaller scale prints uh, because the applique designs on the blocks are quite small so I've started out by taking my sheet of applique paper and my design sheet that you can download and print out and I've just print, uh, traced uh, one of every shape through, through the paper just with a ceramic pencil. So I can see through there and I've just traced one of every shape. Now that, um, because I'm using the design sheet, that would need, really need to be reversed. So you would need to trace on the shiny side. So when you cut it out and flip it over, it's going to be the right way around. So I've done all my shapes, lots and lots of shapes here, and I've cut them out and pre-prepared them all. You can see here for the pairs, I've done the complete shape, and then I've done the little bit that goes down the middle is going to sit on the centre of it like that. Okay. So once I've cut and prepared all my pieces, which I've done, I'm going to keep that sheet next to me as a reference when I'm choosing my fabrics. I'm going to start out with my pairs, and I'm going to use um, a dark, darkish background. I just want some contrast to that centre bit. So I'm going to take it to the wrong side of the fabric and position my pairs. So shiny side of the paper onto the wrong side of the fabric, leaving about a half inch seam allowance in between for my edges to turn over. So I'm positioning them all down at once. I'm going to take my iron and just fuse them in place. Next, I want a contrast to this fabric, not too much, just a little bit for the middle of my hair. So this is block one, partridge in a pear tree. So I'm going to take my next piece of fabric. And it's slightly directional this one, so I'm going to have my centres, if you're um, if that worries you, I'm going to have them all going up the same way on this directional fabric. But if it doesn't worry you, this is a scrappy quilt, remember, then it really doesn't matter which way it goes. Okay, use that into place. Oops, now that one I didn't have shiny side down, obviously. So if that happens and you put it and iron it onto your iron, just quickly peel it off your iron and whack it down. And if you've wasted the glue, like if it's not going to stick, then take your glue pen and just stick that down with the glue pen. Once they're ironed down, now we're going to cut them out. So it's sometimes easier just to cut roughly first. And then you, we can cut with our about a quarter inch. Now these are fairly small pieces, so I'm going to cut probably a little smaller. Got tight curves, a little smaller than a full quarter inch, but certainly don't go any smaller than an eighth of an inch. I'm using the small orange Karen K. Buckley scissors. The blue ones are probably would be a little bit quicker for this size. I might just switch to those. Okay. 
you might see that some of my pieces are lifting a little bit um, I'll be honest here and say that I used a very very old piece of sample applique paper that has been hanging around for a bit so um, it's lost its stiffness a little bit but um, if you've got the lovely new version then our fusible is just a little bit stronger now and our paper is a little stiffer so you shouldn't have those problems of it lifting as much off the fabric and if it does you can see I just ironed it down again so you can see with the larger blue scissors I can just turn my fabric as I close my long blades and just get nice quick smooth cuts around it remember it's just an approximate eighth to quarter of an inch Always go bigger until you get the hang of it because you can't add any on if you've cut too much off. If you don't think in inches and you can't think in inches, you want about four to five millimetres for your seam allowance. And then we just do a little snip on an inside curve, not all the way to the paper, just stop a thread short of the paper, just on inside curves. We don't need to clip outside curves. Next onto my leaves. Actually, first of all, I'll do first of all I'll do my bird. So I have a bird body, and then I've just done two of the little saddles on there. I actually thought I'd done three, but maybe I've lost one. No, here's my third one. Is my third one. No, nope, that's a leaf. Maybe I'm just doing two. Here it is. It's tiny. There's my third one there. So it's going to be a body and three pieces on top. So I need to get contrast in those. So I might do my bird on this one. My first saddle and this is where I might still grab a couple more lighter fabrics with some more contrast that are small scale I'm not sure if you can see but on these little pieces here I just put myself a line there to remind me that I actually want a little bit more seam allowance because I'm going to be folding this over a lot of layers so I did want a lot of seam allowance Last one and put there. Cutting out every little piece now that I've ironed them all on using the lovely Carrie and Kay Buckley scissors again. I do keep harping on these, but they're perfect for applique because they're a beautiful scissor with a serrated edge and that serrated edge just grabs the fabric as you're going around and it doesn't push the fabric away so it cuts exactly where you want it and you can see how easy it is to cut round and round shapes now notice that on any of these shapes have got a point on it where we might get a tail to deal with later I just cut across the, at the point cut that tip off it's still no closer than an eighth of an inch but if I show you without cutting it off so we go like that and we come back this way then we've got that big long tip there so we can just trim that back to our eighth of an inch don't go any closer or you're going to get some raw threads there but it just reduces a little bit of the bulk when we're doing points and tails later and then again if you have a shape with an inner curve you probably don't really need to do it here but you just clip not all the way to the paper stop a thread short of the paper and that will just help when we're gluing those edges over around the curve so just inner curves 
go ahead and cut out all of your little pieces. Now I mentioned before that I traced and I had to trace on the shiny side because my design sheet wasn't reversed. So that's if you're just doing this simply online and which most of you are and you're downloading and printing out the pattern sheet which is also your layout guide. If you've purchased the iron on transfer set and had them shipped to you then you can just trace all your shapes off that iron on transfer sheet because they are already reversed so the templates are already reversed you can just trace straight straight from there onto the dull side. It's much easier or it's more pleasant tracing on the dull side of the applique, applique paper than the shiny because you're not tracing over that glue but it does work. If you've got the transfers trace on the dull side and if you've just downloaded and printed out the pattern sheet then you're going to have to trace on the shiny side. Same will go for the points on these little tiny ones here. These are very tiny so we want to get re re reduce as much of the bulk as possible. So I'm going to take those tips back to there. So when I show you the gluing process in a minute you'll see uh, how that actually assists by having not as much there. Sometimes it's easy just to roughly cut them apart and then go back individually and trim them back. gluing our edges over so I've ironed on I've cut out with my quarter inch seam allowance I've clipped just into inner curves and not all the way to the edge of the paper however on a heart where you've got an inner point like that you do need to clip all the way to the paper it's the only way on a shape an inner point like that to be able to get your pieces all the way in and We'll talk about how to deal with that little raw thread there later. If I've cut out my leaves with points, I've just trimmed off the tips to reduce the bolt, bulk there. And on my little saddle pieces here, I've left an extra large piece of fabric allowance there because the way I've done this is I've glued them over to the back and layered them up rather than 
um, completing each piece as a separate one and having three seams along there I've glued them over so I just left a much bigger seam allowance you can see on this one as well so that I've got enough to fold that over to the back and glue it so there's my one bird okay so when we're gluing we're using our fabric glue pen so a water soluble fabric friendly glue pen um, wind it out so I've got a sew line glue pen if you've got any of them in look look like the same shaped container they're all the same and the and the refills will fit each one so we want to wind it out though so that we don't have to use the full six millimeter width of that pen because that's just far too much glue you'll go through a lot more you'll get sticky fingers and it will just be um, harder to stitch through so we don't need to use much so wind it out so we can just use the edge of the glue pen along the edge of the paper not on the fabric and no wider than the seam allowance and then you'll never get sticky fingers and then we just fold until we fill the edge of that paper template and then just push down onto that glue and straight and gentle curves are quite easy if we get to a sharper curve we do what's called a pinch and gather so it, I'm just using my thumbnail on the very edge and just pinch and gathering around there. You don't need to worry if all this excess fabric here is not glued flat. It's going to be behind. We just want to make sure the edge is glued around like that so that on the other side it's quite a lovely smooth curve. If I put the white behind it you can see the nice smooth curve. Okay. Then when we're going down the next side here we're going to glue on the fabric right to the edge around the paper. The glue does dry quite quickly so we just do a little bit at a time. Uh, under these lights it dries and if you're sort of up in the tropics or in warmer weather um, you might find it gets quite sticky and tacky but then it dries quickly. So a lot of people who live in warm cli climates keep their glue pens in the fridge so the refills and the glue is nice and hard and it does, doesn't go all tacky. Okay and it's a matter of that quick of doing it with your thumb. Now don't worry about these tails that are poking out, we'll deal with those when we're stitching, if we're stitching by hand. If I was stitching by machine I would put another bit of glue on there and tuck that back in behind, okay, but it can be quite bulky but that is if I'm stitching by machine. If for this project, for the 12 days project, and you're, if you're applicating, these pieces are really quite tiny and fiddly so I, I'm assuming most of you will be doing it by hand. Okay, a leaf shape like this. I'm going to put glue down one side. It's a nice gentle curve so I can just use the flat of my thumb and let it feed around the edge of that paper. You don't want to roll the edge of the paper in. Our new paper is a little bit stiffer so it's going to be even harder to do that. Um, but if your paper's sort of a little bit softer or you've handled it a bit then just take care that you don't roll the edge of the paper because that changes the shape of your leaf. So that's the first side. The second side again over that fabric all the way to the edge down and over to the edge. The risk with this type of shape is because we've got two layers of fabric now you can't feel that paper and you just sort of press like that and let it um, go to the point and you can see you've got raw threads at the point. You haven't got a folded tip, you've got actually a raw end there. So what you really need to be careful of on a shape like this where you're folding two, piece, two layers of fabric, is we'll just glue that again, is that you have a look at the edge of this paper and you use your eye to make sure you fold all the way into the, into the edge of the paper. Even if you can't feel it, you need to make sure that you're folding to where the edge of that paper would be so that you, at each tip, you've got a double fold or a completely folded point and then your little tails are hanging out to deal with when we're stitching. Okay, the curve, we're not going to glue this straight side because that's going to be folded over our bird, but our curve here, if it is too small to use your whole thumb we switch to that pinch and gather so just your little thumbnail and little pinches right on the edge as we fold it around the edge of that paper template and then we check over here now I've got a little point there where I've got a bit of a box pleat so we don't want box pleats we want gathers think of curtains so a box pleat and we get little points on the edge 
all right so there's my nice curve now if you've got a um, small shape that's quite fiddly or your thumbs are quite fumbly and you um, they don't work so well for you or if you haven't got a thumbnail then if you struggle with using your thumb to do the folding you can use tools so these are the Appliquick tools they're beautiful stainless steel rods they have a little fork on this end and a beveled edge on this end and then the other end they have two points and they can be used for really fine work and the idea is that we hold it with the fork we use that beveled edge to pull the paper uh, pull the fabric over onto the paper it just feeds around the edge of the paper and push it onto the glue now you can get quite quick at this when you've had a bit more practice the only thing that slows you down is that you need to keep picking up that glue pen and then putting it down again because you're using two hands to do your turning. So the Appliquick tools are lovely and we have those available if you want those and a lot of people have them. But you might find another tool like just a cuticle stick or a, an awl or a, um, there's a lot of cake decorating tools that might work. But you can see how I can just work that over and push it down and there's your perfect leaf shape. I move this away so you can see it on there you can see a perfectly smooth curved leaf shape now a lot of people that can do use their thumb and their fingers quite nicely when it comes to fiddly pieces still like to switch to the tools because you've got a little bit more control as I said it's a little slower for me but you have got more control so I can pull that point right up into that uh, into the inner point there and I can deal with it all the way because I'm not having to get a big fat thumb in there and then as we go around quite a small curve here you can just pull a little bit at a time as you bring it around the curve and if you go too far just lift it up and then you bring it around that curve and pushing it onto the glue you might notice I'm working on this black mat. This is a black um, grippy mat. It's just a special fabric that um, grips. It also is washable and ironable. So if I get any glue on it, I can wash it. If I want to um, fuse my shapes on, on the mat, I can do that. Or if I want to press my shapes afterwards, I can iron right onto that mat. But the main thing is that, that it grips your fabric. So it stays in place as you're doing this type of work. And if you had really, really fine detailed points and curves, then you can switch to the other end and you're just pulling that tiniest bit over at a time. Just need a bit more glue there. And pushing it onto that glue so you can work every little gather so that you've got no points on the edges. And where we have that raw thread where we had to clip all the way in to that inner point just make sure that you're pulling as many of those raw threads over as you can so it's only on an inner point that we have that raw thread with this method inner curves we just don't quite clip to the edge so you don't get that raw thread when you're hand appliquing down as with any needle turn applique when you get to that raw thread there just do a double stitch as you're appliquing and that will just lock that raw thread in and stop it from um, peeping, peeping out from underneath and there's our perfectly curved and glued heart and here you can see some other little pieces here some little tiny holly leaves so and just that one to go I'll just quickly do this one So I would suggest if you're choosing to applique or do a combination of techniques for this project that you might choose to just um, pick some parts of your project to do as applique and then the rest you can do just as embroidery. Um, you could do the simple shapes in applique and the more detailed tiny shapes just embroider them so you don't make it too hard for yourself but it just adds that little bit more depth of having some fabric in amongst your embroidery designs um, and 
get, make, makes sort of certain parts of it pop so this is block two you haven't seen that yet but I've just chosen to do some of them in applique and the rest will all be embroidered so that's it for the gluing if you need extra hints and tips on how to glue check out the other YouTube tutorials on my YouTube channel on appliqueing and this part of the process and if you choose to do yours in applique I would love to see it all my little leaves and shapes are all glued ready to go so what I'm going to do next is take my background piece of fabric now you depending on what you're using for your background fabric um, there are different ways of doing this so if you've bought the iron-on transfer set which is what I've used then I've just transferred the same design so the same design that's used for the color K and the embroidery stitchery version I've transferred it on to my background fabric so all my layout guide is there if you're just printing the design page from the Academy portal so you're just doing the download version and you've chosen whatever background fabric you like then you would take your design layout page I've actually only got the um, transfer here but your design layout page place your fabric on top of it and if you need to if you can't see through then use a light box so that you can see through it and then we would be positioning all our pieces and layering them up on through the light box so you'd be able to see through the light box and then you just take a ceramic pencil and trace all the embroidery lines off your design sheet so if you don't have the iron on transfer that's fine you would just put it on top of your design sheet over the light box so you can see it all position all your pieces and glue them down and then just use the pencil to trace any embroidery lines that we're going to stitch afterwards but I have a transfer so I'm good to go so what I'm going to do is take all of my pieces that are glued up and I'm going to match them into their spots in layers I'm just going to sit them all in their spots and hope that I have one of everything and I haven't lost any as I've been going A lot of these layers are very similar so it doesn't really matter where they go as long as they cover your transfer line if you've used the transfer and if you haven't used the transfer then you're just going to stitch in place on your design through your light box So I think I've worked out where everything goes. I might just swap a couple. So because I've got a lot of the same blue in here. So I'm going to try and see if I can find some others that might fit. Okay. So once you're happy with that. I'm going to take my Roxanne's basting glue and I'm going to start gluing them all down. So just lift up a couple of dots. Now don't put the glue near where those tails are because we're going to want to be able to tuck those under so we don't want them glued down.
once you've glued them all down with the glue, hit it with an iron. That will set that glue and make it much stronger so you don't lose bits as you're stitching. Also flattens all your shapes and things so they're sitting a nice and flat on your work. So your threads don't get fallen up. You've got lots of little bits here. The applique version is probably a little more challenging. So for those that want a challenge, the red work is obviously the simplest and you don't even have to think about thread colours. Of course, you could do the embroidery version in lots of colours if you want to. The colour K version is a cheap way of applique, so coloured pencil applique. And then for those that just love applique, there's your panel ready to stitch. Now I could have also appliqued this centre stem but I decided to leave that um, to stitch with the thread and I'm just going to use, so now just check if you've missed it or some haven't stuck. Uh, I'm going to use just a variegated blue thread to stitch all of this. I think it'll look lovely. I'm just going to get that off my paper. I shouldn't have left that on my paper while I was doing it, sorry. Do that on a tabletop or something that you can wipe your glue off afterwards because the glue sometimes does go through to through your backing fabric. I'm going to applique my pieces by hand. It could be done by machine, but they are very tiny pieces and quite fiddly, so I'm going to do mine by hand. Um, and when I'm appliqueing by hand, I'll put a bit more glue on that one there. I like to use one of our Hugs and Kisses applique needles. Okay, that's a very nice fine needle but not so fine that it bends when you use it. I can't work with a uh, bendy needle. And it has a nice long eye, so it's easy to thread. A lot of applique needles have a tiny little eye, like a milliner or a straw needle, and they're very hard to thread. So our, our applique needles, the Hugs and Kisses ones, are a little shorter so they don't bend and they have that long eye, but they're still very fine and easy to thread. Okay, so I'm going to thread. I'm using a Superior Threads bottom line, it's a 60 weight polyester thread so it's very fine and it's strong and it will just sink into the weave of the fabric. If your stitch is good you can just use a blending thread colour um, but I'm going to use the navy blue because a lot of all my fabrics are blue obviously so that's going to blend with everything. But if you've got lots of different fabrics just choose a blending colour, the champagne or the grey or the khaki are very good blending colours. These are just our little tubes that we do of my um, 12 favourite colours, so they're a great way to have a selection. So we're threading our needle and we're knotting it. Um, if that's something that's new to you, there are separate YouTube videos on how to thread a needle and tie a knot that um, could be life-changing if, if that's something that's new to you. Alright, so when we're appliquing, I'm going to start with uh, a leaf that's got a point. So we come up through the back and just catch the edge fold of the fabric piece on top. Then we go straight back down in the same hole but just into the background fabric, slide along and catch the fold a little bit further on. Only a couple of millimetres or an eighth of an inch is, is plenty. Now I'm holding my piece of work so that my thumb is holding down the edge that I'm stitching and it's holding there so it's nice and in control and it's not flapping everywhere. And I'm stitching towards the applique piece, so I'm not, going, not trying to stitch that way, okay? I'm stitching towards me and into the applique piece. If I was trying to stitch away from me and into the applique piece, you just, just don't have the same amount of control and see the piece is popping up and you have to hold it down and it's hard to get the right spot. So towards me and towards the piece of applique and for me being right handed I go right to left. So catch the fold, straight back down, move along. 
And when you pull that thread up, give it a little tug and the tiniest bit of thread that is on the top of the fabric is just going to sink into the weave of that fabric and you'll never see that stitch. Even if it wasn't a blending thread, you can pull it into the weave of that fabric because it's so fine and you will not see the thread. Now for our point, I want to stitch right in the point of that little leaf and then I'm going to take a second stitch in the point so that it's locked down. I'm going to turn so that I'm ready to go back in a new direction. And here's our little tail sticking out. It's not a very big one in this case. So I'm just going to use the needle and sweep that tail in underneath. So none is showing. Give it a little tug to make sure your point is pointy still. In the same hole in the point and then move along. And that's how you deal with your little tail at any point. Now if your tail was facing the wrong direction, so it was actually towards you as you were stitching up to the point, you have two choices. You can either flip it the other direction or you can tuck it under and then stitch to your point and tug out that point. But it is nicer if it's already facing away from the point. So as I'm going through to the back, I am pricking my finger underneath. I'm not pricking it so that it pierces the skin. I can just feel it and know when to turn my needle back up. But that means I've gone through to the back of my background fabric. And it means that my piece is well stitched on. I'm back to the beginning and my tail is pointing towards me this time instead of after the point. So that's one of those instances. So in this case it's very tiny so I'm just going to tuck it under. Stitch to my point. It's so tiny it's hard to tuck it under. I haven't really got enough there to tuck under. one's giving me a bit of grief because it's actually too small. Alright, so just fiddle, tuck it under. If you need to do an extra stitch to hold it under there, you can. And then, oh, I've just lost my top piece. Turn in my new direction and continue on back to where I started. And now jump into the centre to this little piece on top. And when you've got more than one layer, the paper stays in, so we can sew through all these at once. That doesn't matter. We don't have to take cut the back and take the paper out and do the next piece. But we don't need to try and get all the way through to this background fabric. You just need to attach the top layer to the layer underneath it. So you just need to be going down through that bottom petal fabric and then back up through the fold of the top layer. Now here's my tail going the wrong direction so I'm going to tuck it in under there, sew it all up. And my point into the point again. into the point again and along the new direction. So now it's just a matter of relaxing in a comfortable chair with a good light over your shoulder in front of a good Netflix show or even just while you're chatting to the family. You can do this at the same time. A few minutes at a time and you'll have this stitch down in no time and be ready to come back and finish the embroidery.
finishing off on the back. Just do a loop, take a little stitch over that thread, up through that loop, do that twice, and then I'm going to trim that off. And you can see all the movement of our stitch was on the back. If you hit the exact same hole, you'd have a, actually have a straight line here, but that's close enough. And all the movements on the back and on the front, you just went straight up, straight down, gave it a little tug and put it into the weave of the fabric. So I'm going to go away and stitch all my applique. And here's my finished block, all stitched, pressed, trimmed and ready to put in a safe place until we put our quilt together. So I fused my finished block onto a Hugs and Kisses Stitchery Stabiliser, placed it in my embroidery hoop and used a Cottage Garden Stranded Floss in a Bonnybrook colour, but that was the colour that, chose, that matched my chosen fabrics. I used a back stitch on all those traced or transferred straight lines and a few lazy daisies as in, and satin stitch down the tree trunk there and on the tips of the little buds. There's my block finished. I hope you enjoy making yours.